Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. I'm Max. I'm friend. I'm other friend. And this is episode Lenny. Um, how the hell are we doing? I, yeah. On episode Lenny. I just really wanted to say that no one else could see, but Max was finger gunning and it was it was fantastic. The visual component is completely lost. Yeah, it Maybe is. Maybe one day. Um, other than that, yeah, fine. Cool. Living yeah. life. This is, this is not much to report. I, I, like, I actually had a call from like um, I have a work coach who called me today and was like, oh, so like... How are things? And I was like, they're fine. That like whatever. And she went, I'll call you again in two weeks because obviously there's nothing to talk about. And I was like, no, there's not. So <laughs> it just be like that sometimes, mm, yeah. you know. <laughs> I moved into a new place, and that now I live there. Yeah, nice. That usually <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah. Took me all but twenty minutes to walk here. Not tonight, but it would have taken me twenty minutes. On a regular night, but you told me don't come here. Where don't did come you go? here for like another hour. Huh? Where did you go? And that is between me <laughs> and the sea. The sea. <laughs> <sighs> you said it, not me. To be fair, who could blame you? Well, yeah. No, we don't have any Wi Fi yet. Oh, yeah. That's coming next week. That's coming. Coming soon <laughs> to a home near me. <laughs> um, wi Fi. So I haven't been able to watch like Netflix or. Any of that shite, um, mm-hmm. which been going on um, on my DVDs. That's what's keeping me going. Nice. Uh, fucking uh, yeah. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, and just, that's a good one to watch when you have no Wi-Fi. That's so if, you ever, if your that. Wi-Fi ever goes out, I know Chris has the DVD for it. Garth Marenghi's yeah. Dark Place, watch that. That's pretty much what we did when we Another moved in. Another advertisement for physical media. Another one, yeah. Uh. Keep Keep doing it. Keep buying physical media otherwise we will all succumb to the bezos um regime or whoever does it whoever's regime it is probably a lot of people the disney regime the streaming regime it's definitely the disney yeah. regime they own everything but yeah i'm eating a hagen dazs strawberry cheesecake ice cream um so if it sounds like i'm eating ice cream that's <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so the Oscar nominations, um, they were announced mm-hmm. what, yesterday, I think. We're not going to talk about them today. Mm. Um, we're going to do an extra special episode on that. Um, so look out for that one. And then probably, I think we're all going to watch it together. And then, you know, then maybe another episode after that, I suppose. To be like, what the fuck? I can't believe they snubbed fucking... Nope. <laughs> um, but yeah. That is 100% that. what that commentary is going <laughs> to yeah. be. Max is still going to be surprised even though he's seen the nominations. I was surprised even when we were like watching the nominations just now. Because I had read them already and I was like, <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, Actually. It, you do instantly forget though because there's like a million categories. Yeah. <laughs> like how are you supposed to remember all of that shit? I don't know. Even they don't remember it. <laughs> Not really, not truly. Mm. I don't think. Um, I hope it's just as eventful because we missed it last year. So I'm hoping it's yeah, yeah just as eventful. You missed it last that, year. Yeah, that that I is sat true. The whole damn Beyonce. He bloody did. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's like super long in it because people like perform and stuff during it, don't they? Yeah, we, we, we don't need a lot of coffee, lads. Yeah, a lot oh, of coffee. Jesus. Get us through that long, long night. Yeah. Bin. Sadly disappointed. How long is it? Like four hours or something? Something like that, yeah. Four <laughs> hours with breaks. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Hope you booked off the time. <laughs> I don't need to book off the time. I don't know, Christmas. I've already got the day off. Ooh, cool. <laughs> he was when like, I it? need this day off, Natalie. I need to watch when the Oscars. When is the Oscars? It's like a Sunday night. It's a Sunday, night, yeah. So going into a Monday. Well, that's bullshit. I have to book Yeah, that'll be, that'll be you. <laughs> I'm the only one who doesn't have this problem currently. I think it's the 12th going into the 13th of March. I'm going yeah, to Google this. I thought it was, the, f- um, it was the 13th, but actually that makes sense because it's American time, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Let's see. Oscars Air Date UK. Just tell me. Just fucking tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell me. Live on Sunday, 
March 27th. So that's um. Did you say March 27th? That is that's not what, what it you says. Just... That's the Monday. The fuck. Oh, the solstice 2022. That's why. Oh right, I was going to say it's that showing is... me a fucking. <laughs> I like thought an it was, article from a year ago. I fully thought it was the 13th. As the first, as the first result. <laughs> Why did it do that? <laughs> like you said, the Oscars website doesn't even know what it's doing. So it the 12th sense. of March. Okay. 2023. Nice. Uh, let's see if this changes things. <laughs> that is. is ah, something? here we go, a Sunday. Okay, and then it changes nothing. Like, yeah, I guess I'll book off the... <laughs> the Monday thing. <laughs> Look, all that just to be like severely underwhelmed and disappointed and um yeah. losing out on a lot of sleep. So yeah, excited for that. Um <laughs> <laughs> raring to go. Awesome. Fucking hell. The so, stuff that we do. Yeah. That all that to come and more mm. on the Sunday movie marathon. But until then we did a marathon, as we are so often want to do. On the Sunday Movie Marathon. We did um, Brendan Gleeson movies. The Man, the Myth, the Irish Legend. Brendan, the man. Yeah. Gleeson. <laughs> father of Domhnall. What Domino. are you saying? Father of Domhnall. Oh my god, I forgot he was the father of Domhnall Gleeson. Grandfather <sighs> to all. <laughs> he bathed we, a genius. So we did, um, and bear with us here. We did The Village from 2004. We did The Guard from 2012, I think. And, or maybe it's 2011, I forget. Uh, and The Banshees of Inner Sharon from last year. Um, so Chris picked the first um, Brendan Gleeson movie. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a bit about that? I forgot you picked it. Like, and no you joke. fucked us! You did fuck <laughs> us. Uh, <laughs> so I picked... M. Night Shyamalan's movie, The Village. Um, the movie is about a small little um, Pennsylvanian town, um, quite old and fashioned. It feels Amish to kinda me. Kind of Amishy, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. Um, but in this village, <laughs> they keep getting visited by these monsters. Um, and Joaquin Phoenix decides he wants to go out, venture out, and see the outside world. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, which leads into some shit going down. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Um, Jesus Christ. And Adrian Brody, don't so, forget that guy. Um, if we're going <laughs> to... This is a Brendan Gleeson episode. Yes. So if we're going to talk about Brendan Gleeson... Yes. We're going to talk about this movie for about two minutes. Okay. But he's barely in it. He was right at Chris the very told beginning. Me, when I was watching this, he said, I don't remember... Brendan Gleeson being in this movie and that's why I picked it. Yeah. Which to me is a poor reason to pick something for a Brendan Gleeson marathon. Well, I didn't have a lot of memory with it. That so is... I was like, oh, maybe he's in it more. No, but uh, I just don't remember. Do, do you know what made it slightly better though? Um we we uh, had to watch these all um on our Todds, right? And I was watching this with Chris and he goes, I don't know what Max is complaining about. He's right there. He's right at the beginning. There's <laughs> Brendan Gleeson yeah, he's like the first person you see in the movie. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, no, fair <laughs> enough. He is. He's there. For about 40 seconds. Collectively. He, yeah, he's... I forgot. Um, by the end of it, I forgot we were watching a Brendan Gleeson like, marathon. Does that make sense? Like yeah. By the end of the film, I was like, why are we watching The Village again? He does just kind of disappear after like the first 20 minutes. He's on the village council. That's him. Yeah, there That's you go. his character. <laughs> I don't even know his name in this. Brendan. He doesn't have a name. <laughs> Nobody calls him by his name because that's how <laughs> nothing of a character he is and how little it matters that he's in it. So. That is, yeah, that is true. Like, y he could have not been in this and yeah. it would have been the same movie. I think what makes it worse is he he's not even very good in it. <laughs> No. No one was very good. But he's not really... Nobody's really given a lot no. to do. That Yeah, there's actually not a lot happening. So what they meant to do, just stand around and yeah, fucking... Yeah, he's got um like an American accent and it's not very good as well. He doesn't no. sound American. That's what I thought. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. It was like a hybrid accent. Like he... Yeah. Like someone who had moved to America for a while and then like hasn't... 
had their accent like uh, into <clears throat> integrate properly, and that's yeah. what it sounded like. I feel like a lot of that probably comes down to the directing, though. Well, also, yeah. I guess maybe um, if you've got a thick enough accent, <laughs> maybe it's not that easy to disguise. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> imagine, imagine if M Night did like a legit movie. But Brendan Gleeson was just the protagonist. I'd, I would watch that in a heartbeat. Yeah. But instead, he used David Batista. <laughs> Dave main. Batista is great. Yeah. <laughs> instead, he used Dave Batista in the village. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's mostly Joaquin and um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Bryce Dallas Howard. What a name. Nothing really happens in this movie. No. It's very boring. <laughs> it's just. It's just, yeah, no, nothing happens. And, like, don't go out into the woods because they'll get you. And yeah, like, like, I who, guess I won't go into the woods then. <laughs> and then for, like, half the movie, they're like, see that? See those woods? I'm not going in there. And that's, like, basically most of it. Yeah. And then what, like, Joaquin Phoenix, he, like, almost dies. And then Bryce Dallas Howard's like, I'm going to go into the woods. And then, like that's that's the movie. That's the entire thing. That is actually like, running away from like it, yeah. a porcupine man, like yeah. a guy dressed as a porcupine <laughs> 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 in that my is, cape. <laughs> that's actually embarrassing. Like the more I'm thinking about it, that is literally well, that. That's all there is. Yeah, yeah. No, there's the twist, the M Night Shyamalan piece de resistance twist, and was- there's two of them in this. There's two M. Night Shyamalan yeah. piece de resistance twists. Oh, yeah. The no, first the- one's that they're the people in the monsters. The first one was that Brendan Gleeson wasn't the main <laughs> character. <laughs> no, it's God, the, that pesky the council are the people who are in the monster suits. And then the second one's that it's present day. The- yeah. I saw the latter coming. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, when... From like the beginning of the movie, I was like, "This involves a twist because it's M Night Shyamalan." Mm. When I had never seen this movie before, I have no no clue what was happening <laughs> or what happened in this movie. I've never heard anything about it, really. But I was like, "Wouldn't it be funny if like it was that, like the twist was that it's actually present day and these guys are fucked up?" <laughs> and that's what it happened. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> M Night getting too predictable. He is. Yeah, it's not like an old, which was like really funny, but boring. This yeah, is just boring. Yeah, yeah. At I least, think yeah. this was like the movie where I think, like the first time in his career where people were really, really split, where people were like, what the fuck is this? So I think for a lot of people, this is like where his career kind of like tails off. Yeah, like didn't we, um, we look, we were looking it up on like IMDb or whatever, and there was like, is yeah, there's like very split. They have like these categories of awards and it was like nominated for like loads of like, Oscar flops or whatever and then it was like nominated in some other country for like best movie of the year yeah. and it was like the polar opposite of each other. <laughs> so yeah there was weird. a um, award, I can't remember what the award um, people were called but they nominated it for worst movie and most <laughs> underrated movie. Oh and most disappointing movie. Yeah. It, it kind of like, I guess kind of like the Razzies but not the Razzies you know. Um, disappointing. So funny, yeah. I guess they thought maybe because a lot the people, of people in were it disappointed would... because like it has good actors in it though. Yeah, and it's M Night. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. when this movie came out, he was like people was were calling peak, him the know? next Spielberg yeah. and stuff. They were like, doing, like he's going to reinvent. Right? Yeah, they were like he's going to reinvent cinema because he was I mean, like, he he did, did. Six Sense, <laughs> Unbreakable, and Signs all in a row. So they weren't that wrong though. He's yeah. definitely everybody knows who he is. He did reinvent cinema in a type of way. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess it's kind of like a mixed bag. Everyone's going to go isn't. see Knock at the Cabin Door. Oh yeah, I'm going to be yeah. there like first day. Oh mate, I'm. If it's anything like old, I'm a hundred percent going to be there mm-hmm. because, it, like, that is a film that you can count on, though, right? This film was not funny like old. This film was boring like yeah. boring. But old is amazing because no. it's so fucking. You love the guy, honestly. You do. He's, he's a character. There's, yeah. I like the fact More that he was in it. More character than Brendan Gleeson in this movie. <laughs> he was, what was his name in this movie? Jay or something. What, M. Night? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 he, yeah, was, he yeah. was. He was like sitting at the sheriff's office, whatever. Yeah, he with was the, the sheriff. He was some guy. 
reading a newspaper, yeah. talk about this really long yeah. monologue, and Chris like, was like, "Don't ask questions, <laughs> Joe." <laughs> yeah, Chris was like, <laughs> yeah. "Why is he like here, making giving himself yeah. this long monologue?" Like, why he does he act? like show up in all of his movies when he's a terrible actor? <laughs> Because it's his movie. Yeah. He could do what he wants. Yeah, he does like, whatever he wants. That's something he, I think he got from Alfred Hitchcock. Because obviously Alfred Hitchcock has a small cameo in every single one of his movies. Mm. Usually it's just him like standing in the background. But M. Night kind of was like, I'm going to act as well. I mean, he was only in it for about... He can do it all, man. Yeah. He, he, he He's like a really... He works really hard, clearly. Yeah, he does. Oh, well, he does. He pumps out movies like fucking nothing. One of the hardest working directors there yeah. is. I wish he'd stop working harder and worked better, personally. <laughs> no, I don't give a fuck. I think, <laughs> I think even with his worst movies, you like watch him and you can tell that he loves this movie and he's put yeah. like 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 hundred percent effort into it. I would have said. I never um, feel like he's like half assing a movie, even if it sucks. Uh, well, no, not not intentionally. <laughs> I don't think. I think his movies are bad. By accident, does that make sense? Like, I don't think he goes into a movie going. How many times do you make the same shit. accident? Maybe he's just a shit director. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of is, but he's also he's like not a, shit a really director. creative guy. No, this is what I mean. He's obviously not shit, but he's got more misses and then hits, which makes me think. Yeah, that now. May- yeah, maybe he's gotten shit. Like he has I mean, a spark. Now he just doesn't care. He's like he doesn't need to. He's he like Bruce need to Willis. Fit. He's just stop caring. Well, yeah, he doesn't really have like, to. He used to be, to be in like really great stuff, and now he just doesn't <laughs> give a single fuck. Yeah, I, I think up until this movie, I could have said at least all the movies I've seen of his were entertaining. This just wasn't though. But I've, I have, I, mm, I don't know how many I've not seen, but I could tell you, I think I've seen more than I've not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have loads of movies. Yeah. Probably has like ten, fifteen in total. Now, like I said, most of them are entertaining, but this one just. Like do, we, do you see what's <laughs> happened here? What? Have we M9 ourselves? Brendan Gleeson episode, we've pivoted. Now we're talking about <laughs> right. um, the career of M. Night Shyamalan. Now yeah. let me tell you, I was literally just about to get to that. I was like, why the fuck are we talking about M. Night when we're supposed to be talking about Brendan? Because M. Night was in this movie more than Brendan Gleeson was. Or about the same fucking amount. Yeah. We can't really talk about his performance if there wasn't one. <laughs> I mean, I do, yeah, I don't know. I just... <laughs> There's nothing to say because he's not in it. <laughs> There's just nothing in it. Really, I don't have anything more to say. About yeah, there's nothing to retort because the there's nothing to say. I just don't. I, there was nothing, man. It sucked, and <laughs> and he and wasn't Brendan even Gleason in it. Was barely in it. Like, what, what do you want me to say, Chris? It was like a waste of my life. I I I you shot your shot. And it didn't work. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate the hustle. It didn't work out this time. Maybe next time. This, uh, at least, it was like the the catalyst for you to take off a bunch of names from the the, the marathons list. Yeah, because obviously Brendan Gleeson has like been the lead in movies, but he's a supporting actor more than he's the lead. Yeah. So it made picking quite difficult. Yeah. Well, to, um, to be fair, if no one had pit, uh, we hadn't watched In Bruges recently, I think that could have been a good already been third pick. On the yeah, we've podcast. already talked about In Bruges. That was Dude. an early one. Dude. It was in um, one, one, um, one I watched like years and years and years ago that like mm. depressed the shit out of me was Calvary. It was like a priest or whatever. Oh God! I think I watched that on like New Year's Day, <laughs> and I was like so tired because I'd like stayed up all night and like. It was like the evening of the next day. I was like just watching Calvary. I think I watched that and um, what's that little um sick man one? The uh, the beautiful life one or whatever, where he's like a stick guy. Oh, I think I know what you're on about. It's like a like it's a beautiful time to be alive or whatever. Something like, well, like that. Like, yeah, and I was like, this is also yeah, really such a beautiful day. I think it's yeah, cool. such a beautiful day. Oh, I watched I that. Love that. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> that was like back to back. Happy New Year to Max. Jeez, that's a heavy movie. Mm. And I never watched it again. No. That's a good one I think I'd pick for this. Mm. Not Brendan Gleeson movie. Calvary is one that I probably would have picked if I hadn't picked um Because I'm trying to pick movies I've not seen before. But I want to watch Calvary again at some point. I think that'd be alright. Anyway, The Village. 
Um, can, do can we, we want to rate this? I think we should because there's nothing there's to nothing say. There's nothing to talk about in terms of Brendan Gleeson. And there's nothing to talk about in terms and we of got story. A good, we got a good little discussion about M. Night instead. That's true. It's what Swings want to... and roundabouts. Yeah. What do you want to rate it out of, Chris? Porcupines. Porcupines. I actually kind of, I, I missed that bit though. I didn't see him looking like a porcupine. What? I was. They showed it so many times. Yeah. She clearly wasn't paying attention. You just didn't. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look this one up. <laughs> you didn't even like look at it. No. Okay. I remember the what? little like red hoods and stuff. I'll let I don't you look remember, it up like... while I say what I thought of the movie. Yeah, it's not a great one. It's not my least favourite M. Night movie. That probably still goes to Last Airbender or Lady in the Water. Um, but it's definitely a massive <laughs> miss, I think. It's just like the dialogue's really weird, I think. It just visually, it looks really ugly. None of the acting is very good. Um, I've seen it like three or four times for some reason. What the fuck? Because like previously I was like, oh yeah, that's an all right one. Have but... you seen it three or four times? I know. And you still don't know that Brendan Gleeson is barely in it. Yeah, that's just that kind of goes to show how like bland and forgettable that's it is. That's quite shocking to be honest with you, um, Chris. To be fair, I was like 10 years ago as well. I watched it like three times in like a few weeks. Mm. Uh, yeah, I give it three porcupines out of ten. Um, yeah, it's not like his worst. Um, M. Night's not Brandon Gleeson. <laughs> <laughs> it might be Brandon Gleeson's worst. Um, it's not like, it's not like The Last Airbender, which is personally insulting to me. <laughs> it's just whatever. It's a bit shit and boring. And, um, <laughs> um but, uh, as, as a Brendan Gleeson movie, it's like a one out of ten. <laughs> as just like a straightforward, like, the movie itself. Probably give it, uh, four porcupines out of ten. Just d- never want to watch it again. Uh, I like the look of the porcupine monster fella. Four porcupine things out of 10 so I forgot what you said already <laughs> Ooh, yeah awesome okay so next on the docket we've got let me just google this god is Brendan <laughs> Gleeson on trial uh, it's from 2011 <laughs> this is the one comedy movie Irish comedy movie uh, starring Brendan Gleeson as the protagonist this time <laughs> he is definitely <laughs> there he's definitely doing some stuff yeah that's fair um he, he, he has to, he, so, okay, so it's in <laughs> Ireland, and, um, <laughs> and Tom Cheadle comes over, and he's oh, like, yeah. we have to deal with these murders, man, and, um, and the, and the drug trafficking, and Brendan Gleeson, he's a cop, and he's like, I don't want to do it your way, I'm doing it my way, um, so it's all about him doing it his way, um, you know, getting the clues, solving the the mysteries, and fucking whores. Scooby Doo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Directed by John Michael McDonough. Um, on a budget of six million dollars. He also did that Calvary movie. He did, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, okay. Brother yeah. of Martin McDonough as well. With, huh? He's his brother, didn't you say? Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. This director, oh, man. Fuck me. We're going all over the show. Right, yeah, so, um, yeah, the guard. <laughs> the guard. He plays the guard. He is yeah. the titular guard. Guarding stuff. Cool. So, what do we think of this one? I didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> oh, it, it it was quite obvious from, like, the first half an hour that Chris was just ready to kill himself. <laughs> I can tell when Chris isn't enjoying a movie because he just, he just you know, like, unanimated is not even the word. Yeah. It's definitely a bit whatever. Yeah. yeah it's like very inconsequential. It feels, doesn't really jump out. Yeah, it feels very middle of the road, doesn't it? Yeah. For what it's worth, I laughed quite a bit, but like not really all that much. I didn't. Well, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> It reminded me a lot of that um, film Filth, where mm-hmm. it was definitely going for something quite like provocative in terms of its humour, but I just kind of found it all in poor taste and didn't... Really I, find any f- I actually preferred Filth for what it's worth. Yeah, I, I prefer preferred Filth. Filth. Yeah. Filth was at least kind of fun in a weird fucked up kind of way. 
This wasn't yeah. fun in any fucked up kind of way. I don't even hate this. I just, I said to Chris that, that this is a film that gives me like no strong opinion either way. Like yeah. I don't remember a lot of it. <clears throat> Felt and very, I don't like, care that much. Just mediocre, very run of the mill, I think. It was yeah. very typical, like, oh, let's get this British guy in and he's going to be all British. Don uh, Cheadle? No, that, that's the token American guy. We're talking... Um, uh, Mark, Mark Strong. Yeah, that's the one. Who's not actually English, is he? Is he not? Pretty sure he's Scottish. Yeah. Oh, he's I mean, Scottish. okay, in the film he's British yeah. then. Okay, we'll go with that. I love Mark Strong. Yeah, it was a, like a real surprise to see like so many, so many people in this. Yeah, I you didn't expect Don Cheadle. You got your Brendan Gleeson, you, you, you <laughs> your Mark Strong, and fucking you know whoever, who all these other people. I did wonder if it was him for a second. Then Chris you, made some joke about it, and I was like, "Oh, that is oh, Don no, Cheadle." He is, he is English. <laughs> oh, he is. Yeah, he okay. just does a really good Scottish accent. I oh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Sorry, Mark. Um, <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. He's good, man. Brendan is good in this. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's or, really good. Yeah, um, I think. Yeah, I, I I get what you're saying about like the humor. It is like, yeah, well, okay, well, it's trying to be like edgy. It's going yeah. for like mm-hmm. edgy stuff, yeah. which I suppose in like 2011 uh, was like that was quite peak, though, wasn't it? I think everyone was doing peak, that kind of peaking, thing. Yeah, yeah. Being it was dark also for like, very um, prevalent in like the 2000s. I think it was like the edgier, the better. Mm. Yeah, and it, you. you Anyone saying, like, you can't say that, they'd be like, we're going to say it. Yeah, I, I could kind of sense that from this film. It gave it that kind there's of like, There's vibe. a lot of, like, sort of jokes that you could perceive as, like, you know, there's, like, racist stuff going on and, like, yeah. sexist stuff. But it's never, like, it never is that because, like, yeah. it's because it's, like, poking fun at the main character. And also, I suppose, that, like, yeah. Ireland in a, in a sort of way or, like, the kind of closed off nature of like an island yeah, where you're all like just secluded on one place because yeah, isn't that basically what like i'm irish racism was... is a part of my yeah, culture that's, that's literally what i was just thinking he yeah. literally comments on that so it <clears> kind <throat> of makes sense nothing said thought, without a purpose yeah, i suppose like don cheadle's there just so they can make black jokes like, i didn't think black people could ski uh, or is that I... swimming it's like that wasn't like okay <laughs> and the other stupid <laughs> one that was like Oh, they're not. They're, how are they drug dealers? They're white or something stupid like that. I don't even remember yeah. now. They're Welsh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't think Welsh. anyone interesting was Welsh. Oh yeah, that that bit was kind of uh... pretty funny. <laughs> kind pretty of funny stab at the Welsh. <laughs> to be fair, they barely ever get a stab at them. So. <laughs> Usually, it's people taking a stab at the Irish. Mm. But I'm. T- <laughs> I, is, yeah. I, I said to Chris, I feel like this is the kind of movie that's funnier if you are Irish. Does that make sense? I, I feel like so. it's more of a, I don't know, like <laughs> a cultural contextual kind of, ha yeah. ha ha, this is funny. If that, yeah. Does that make sense? I feel like that did make like a lot the, of sense. The, the dialect and like yeah, the possibly. language they're using and all that. And, um, all that Gaelic like, and stuff. There was, yeah, the Gaelic and like Don Cheadle's going around asking <laughs> questions and everyone was like being Gaelic to him. He's like, these people can't speak English. And then Brendan Gleeson's like, no, they can all speak English. And it just turns out they were just taking the piss out of him. Yeah, yeah. that's quite funny. And what, when he's like, oh, you came to Ireland and thought no one would speak Irish. <laughs> I was like, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> like, I don't actually know what yeah. you expected, to be fair. Fair play. I just, I just don't understand. I, d- I, d- I don't know. Like, the, the, um, There's just a lot of it, though. I just, it's whatever. It's you know, very- when he like, has that day off. You when he like goes, has goes sex back, with some yeah. hookers. <laughs> I like got, that. He's like, no, it's my day off. He just hires some prostitutes and has sex with them. And like, that's the whole joke. Yeah. Is that he has sex with prostitutes. I thought the joke was that they were taking pictures of him on a Motorola Razor. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he felt off the time. I was like, whoa, look at that phone. Good, Jesus. <laughs> I liked how colourful the movie was. Visually, yeah. it looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Pretty, pretty good cinematography in that. And um, it did have some pretty, like, yeah, it was like some pretty locations and stuff as well. But that's just, I think Ireland's meant to be like quite pretty anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just walking a nice through place. like these like pastures or whatever, mm. or like tumble down just green sort of f- fortresses and that. That was really nice. See all of that. 
Yeah, I wish there was more of that yeah. rather than uh, whatever the fuck was going on, to be honest. That's what you want in like an Irish movie. Because they have so yeah. many, you know, that's where they like film Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, they do, Because it yeah. has so many fucking lovely locations. Mm. So it's pretty obvious that they would try to go for something like that. Like, not just centralise it in like a city or whatever. You go to like the countryside and see all the nice sights in there. I like it a lot. <laughs> Story-wise, though, it's not like, it's not that solid. I no. said it's been done before, it's bit, yeah, it's but a, better, yeah, it has. you know. Uh-huh. Like filth, you know, it's kind of like yeah. that. But like, filth has a, a lot more going on mm. psychologically, it, whereas this one yeah. has nothing going on. Yeah, it's very external, isn't it? Yeah, I it's very know, much like, like what is on the the packet. It's that, yeah. It's 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 not it's not even a bad story. It's just not been executed in a unique or interesting way. I guess I think it's just kind of there. Yeah, like the you, everyone knows the story. To you know, much. yeah, it's it's just no. like you know this just you one. You watch Brendan Gleeson like at the beginning of the movie take a tab at acid, and then that's it. You know what you it's go, about. You see, he goes to the crime scene and like he grips that corpse by the crotch, and he's like, hey, "I'm like clairvoyant or whatever." That's how I solved the case. Yeah, that was rotten. <laughs> <laughs> that was Power. the funniest stuff. It was just like in those first couple scenes. Yeah, <laughs> actually, did, I actually kind of got that. I got kind of had the, I'm going to call it the village effect now, where I was like, okay, this could be all right for like the first like 15, 20 minutes. And then after that, I thought, I just don't mm -hmm. really give a shit. It shows him. that Brendan yeah. Gleeson, he can do a lot with a little, I think. Yeah, yes, no, that no. Is true. no, that is true, actually. he. The thing is, he, like the script isn't the yeah. tightest in the world, but he like makes it work, I think. No, he. I, I think he was the only thing that was keeping me watching it, to be honest. Yeah. He was the best part of it. Don Cheadle looks like he was just there for a paycheck, to be honest. He yeah. was just there for a paycheck. He looked like he didn't even know what the fuck was going he on. He was like wandering time. around Ireland one day. Yeah. <laughs> they just <laughs> saw like, him. Don, you want to be in our movie, man? And he's like, yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> My flight got delayed. <laughs> Did they say why he was in this movie? Like, um, What do you mean? Was he Did they say? <laughs> no, I mean like um, what was, was he like a like a big uh, sergeant somewhere, and they sent him he because no FBI. one was getting the crimes sorted or whatever. Yeah, yeah he was from the FBI. Right, yeah, see, he like came why, yeah. from America's FBI <laughs> to this little village town in Ireland, and that's the joke. All oh, right, <laughs> it's okay. stupid. Like, why the fuck would why would he be there? <laughs> it's dumb as hell. Okay, now the stupid joke, mate. Well, okay. So he has like a big shootout at the end. Which was quite fun, actually. Quite, that, the that, that the shootout was, was all right. Insane. I thought it was awful. <laughs> no, it was. It was never. No, I like the I very it was last really bit. Really badly like, put together. I like the very last bit of it, where he's where he's on the bed. And he's like, "I know how to die," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah. you do, bitch. You do know how to die." I don't even know who he was. <laughs> was it? Was it the main guy? I don't even fucking know. Someone knows mm -hmm. how to die, and he fucking did. <laughs> no, I wasn't shot that well, but it was like everything comes together now. And then you, Mark Strong that meets climax, Brendan Gleeson. That's what you want. <laughs> no, they, they don't really do much with it. <laughs> no, I remember, I remember Chris it's like... like fighting on a dock. <laughs> Chris just looked at me and went, if we weren't watching this for the pod, we would not be watching this anymore. No, no. I was like, okay. No. I would have turned off after about half an hour, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't <laughs> It wasn't really worth it. Yeah, I've never heard of this movie before. No, I mean, so. either. <laughs> No, that that's the whole you? point. You don't know until you unfortunately watched a couple of them, you know? <laughs> until you watch it for a Brendan Gleeson marathon. Yeah, at least he's in this one. Max gets, that's extra, true. Max gets extra points yeah. just because he's in this I one. I recommended a movie with Brendan Gleeson <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm sorry, I actually don't have anything to say. No, no that's I just, fine. No, I mean, yeah, it, it is what it is. Like <laughs> yeah. we said, it's like what it Run is on, the, the on, the, on a 10. Cool. So we'll, we'll, I guess... We'll <laughs> what do you want to write out of? Just something really racist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're rated out of Ivan Goncharov's because um, his mother was like reading Ivan Goncharov. That is amazing. <laughs> in that one scene. Nice. Um. Yeah. Didn't really get anything out of this movie. I found it very bland and forgettable. Um, I don't really remember anything that happened, to be completely <laughs> honest. It's just like completely exited my mind. Um, so I'll give it four Ivan Goncharovs out of ten. That's two for two. We're, we're, mm. we're coming in hard with this Brendan Gleeson <laughs> marathon. Really, really going ham with it. You know, if I wasn't going to pick, like, if I, if I, if I 
was of the mind that I was going to pick movies that I had seen before. Probably would have gone with Calvary. Um, but since that's not my MO these days, apparently, um, and I want to sabotage myself, I picked The Guard. Which is fine. It's inconsequential. I don't want to watch it again. Brendan Gleeson is good, but that's about the only thing I cared all that much about when I was watching this movie. Uh, five Ivan Gontorovs out of ten. Yeah, I think everyone's summed it up. Five Ivan Gontorovs out of ten. And you watch this episode gets killed because we said that three times. Yeah, so I also picked a movie where Brendan Gleeson is in it, so that is good. I picked The Banshees of Inner Sharon from 2022 by Martin McDonnell, who is the... Do, is it Donnell? Did I get that right? Donna. Donna. Who like was a, the like brother the of yeah. the other guy. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, <laughs> to be fair, for a second I was thinking, oh, fuck, am I going to pronounce it like with a J? But... I didn't. Anyway. Um, More like Martin McDonough. McDonough. <laughs> you know how these Irish are. <laughs> yeah, definitely very Irish, to be fair. But, um, yeah, it's about uh, these two lifelong friends who, for some reason, one day one of them decides to end their friendship for good. And what happens because of that? And there's... Uh, just uh, that's the basic premise of it, and um, there's a lot to unpack. So yeah. I, I'm not going to rattle on because yeah. there's so much to unpack. <laughs> um, yeah, so seen this three times. Mm-hmm. Uh, big movie of last year. It's up for a lot of Oscar buzz. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's yes. the team that brought you in Bruges. Mm-hmm. All those guys are back, and better than ever. One could say. With an, a full on, full on fucking Irish movie, um, very much yeah. so, yes. And it's you know, it's one of the best movies of last year. I love it so much. Saw it twice in the cinema. Um, I would have seen it another time if I could have. Um, mm. But yeah, so so good, such a good movie, so funny. Yeah. Um, the they're at the top of their game. Um, really like in with more drama this time, whereas within Bruges they were more going for comedy. Um, this is still very funny, but it also has a lot of sad elements in it and um, a lot to do with um, like human connection and love and yeah. um, war and the futility of anger and um, hatred against one another and your fellow man, I think. Yeah, I love it so much. It's fucked. It's what it is. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> to, put, to put it politely. Like, Max had this really nice thing to say, and there's just me like, it's fat. It's pure fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, um, I've seen all these memes about, like, you know, the, the opening scene where um, Colin Farrell's, like, walking through, like, this beautiful, like, landscape of mm. Ireland. There's, like, rainbows and shit, and everyone's oh, like, gorgeous. Oh, if only the whole movie was this happy, because it just isn't. And I was like, it can't be that bad, surely. And then, like, the longer it went on, I was like, oh, my God, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> let's, let's just get that straight good. first off. I'm it glad. was very, very good. I mean, I kind of wanted to see it, but I wasn't, like, I don't know, like, I'm I'm very much a, and this is going to sound really awful, but I'm very much a, if it doesn't look interesting or the title doesn't sound interesting, I don't want to watch it. And to be honest, Anything I heard about it didn't sound very interesting, so I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. But I'm always wrong <laughs> about my own taste. Mark McDonough is great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really love him. Uh, I first heard of him watching um, one of his plays um, oh, yeah. called The Cripple of Inish Man. And apparently this is great kind name. of like, it's like set on the same island. It was originally like written as, as a play to be part of a trilogy like of just Irish like stories. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, And I think in the end he it would work better as a movie yeah yeah it does work really well as a movie it does work very well yeah, yeah. I don't even know it's from I didn't even realise it was meant to be like a time piece until yeah, he gets cause... out his shit in calendar and it's 1923 and I was like what the fuck mm. is 1923 <laughs> I didn't even notice that I just thought <laughs> it, like all the time I was watching it I was like this could be is this a period piece because I actually didn't know Mm-hmm. But it could be like any any time really, yeah. And it just would have felt timeless because 
you know, there's no like cars or anything, but also because mm. it's set on this one small island off the coast of Ireland, um, it's, you know, why, why would they need like phones and cars and all that? Because everybody they know is like within a mile radius walking distance. Oh, I guess that's yeah. fair and enough. They don't really need to communicate with anybody outside of that because everything they know is on the island. I just kind of, I started to question it because um, at first I didn't, at first I thought it was just, yeah, like, you, you know, it could have just been any time, anywhere. But then mm. it got to the point where I was like, they go to the pub a lot and they don't really do anything else. Is this like, was this the olden days? Because that's all they did, right? And Chris was <laughs> like, yeah, that's, the they, they didn't have anything <laughs> else to do. And, and I was like, their animals. ah, mm. right, it they must be. The, uh, the land. Yeah, and then what happens? That two scenes later, he literally crosses off the day, and I was like, right, that makes sense, because mm. he's like, ah, oh, it's April 3rd, no, April 2nd or whatever, and I was like, ah, oh, makes yeah. sense. But no, I, I see where you're coming from, though. Like, if if I hadn't picked up on the fact that all they ever do is go to the pub, I would have thought it was, yeah, <laughs> there is there is no time period needed yeah. for a movie like this, because you could have just been a farmer out in the can't think of an island right now but you could have been yeah, farmer out on the yeah. island you know what i mean out doesn't matter those islands yeah it's because i guess it's also because like when they go home they don't like have tv or anything they're just like like knit in front of the fire or whatever and i thought this is old <laughs> this has to be <laughs> i just thought that's how they are in ireland <laughs> <laughs> they don't have tvs <laughs> that's just how they do it <laughs> yeah they're always at the pub aren't they? <laughs> I kind of like that though, because like that's where like all of the shit just goes down. It's yeah. like it's like the communal the area. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Did you go to the pub?" It's like, "Yes, we go there every day." <laughs> I feel like that's what we we're lacking. Mm. We need to be doing this. Just go down the pub, like fuck it. That should be like our default. Like in Friends, how they always go to the coffee shop. <laughs> we just go. <laughs> don't we just what? go to the pub, like in just, How I Met Your Mother. We we'll just go mm-hmm. to the Phoenix every night. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? <laughs> Too far, I wouldn't want to go to the Phoenix every night, I guess. Yeah. If we weren't in a cost of living crisis, you know I'd do it. But <laughs> <laughs> Now that sounds like the sounds of a man who's just moved out. I don't think I would have heard that from him about two months ago. <laughs> no, no, I've actually got to <laughs> look after my, myself and my finances. Oh, it sucks so much. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole of the UK is just going, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I do think it's quite strange. It, it is a strange thing to just decide not to be friends with someone anymore. Especially when apparently they were mates yesterday. Yeah. I yeah. find that weird. But I do like that they don't show us them being friends before because you don't lame, really need to. Yeah, you understand like the weight of it through how they both react mm-hmm. to the, the 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 breakup. I suppose yes. that's essentially what it is. Um, it, yeah, it does hit me. I know the full gravity of a situation like that. It is weird. It is weird just to like stop being friends with someone and be like, yeah, I guess we're not friends anymore. Especially if it's not gradual, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, we're just not like, I don't like you, like you're boring. That was his main reason. I can't believe that's what he said. That he was dull. And like, (laughs) there's no reason to... Break up with Yeah, because this is going to sound friend, really bad. You know? But when he was talking but, like, oh, I just want to focus on my music and stuff, I thought, okay, he's a bit of an older man. Like, if he thinks he hasn't got long left and he wants to do his music, fine, whatever. But then he's like, yeah, but he's also like the most boring human alive. I thought, that's just mean. Like, how long have you guys been friends? Like, how can you... Devil's advocate, though. do that. Fair enough. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, because the thing mm. is, there's no point in being friends with someone if you... Don't, you know, yeah, if you yeah. don't like them, but I don't think he went about it in a good way, like at all. But then, no, he was kind guess, of a dick. But then also, Colin Farrell was really fucking annoying and just wouldn't take the hint. And I was like, they're both annoying, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, like, but he was yeah. also he's not the brightest bulb, um, Porrick, is he? No, he's so not. So it stands to reason that he'd think it was all kind of a practical joke. And when he pulls off the the, the new month on the calendar and it's April 1st and he's like oh. <laughs> that crafty bugger <laughs> to be fair <laughs> I like that bit because I thought okay Matt, like um, if if this was any other situation um, I probably would have been like actually yeah like that that's a, that's a funny meme Brendan that's a funny meme but you but- would be like like what the f- like what the fuck yeah no because that's what I mean like yeah. the first thing you think of like, is yeah, oh, yeah this is a obviously joke. a joke it is yeah. a joke 
You would. Or just be friends again tomorrow. Yeah, you just would. And the, 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 he persists because, first of all, he's a bit dim-witted. He doesn't really understand what's going on. Mm. But also, like, it's when, when you're in a friendship like that and you see each other every day and that just stops happening immediately, it's hard to wrap your head around, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I did feel for him because it's almost like even when he was given closure, he wasn't really given closure because, once again, it's the, apparently the 1920s and he yeah. sees him every single day. So, like, it did take a lot for him to be like, oh, he is serious. Yeah. <laughs> That's where a lot of the comedy comes from. <laughs> oh, like, well, like, you just need to stop talking to him. He's and he's like, chucking yeah, his fucking sort of, fingers at him. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was actually gross. Fucked. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck was that, that all about? That is like, like, come on. Like, really? What I thought was a little bit unreasonable. Why is Fingers the he, first port of call? <laughs> like, why did he, like, he did all four in one go because he was like, I'm so fucking sick of this man. Well, I think <laughs> the Fingers was because, like, he obviously plays the violin and he's the like, the fiddle, yeah. No, but he said he and was he... going to do a finger one by one, but no, he does one and then he goes, do you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to do all four. Yeah, he warms me him, off. though. He gets yeah. fed up and he's like, I'll cut all four of them off. It... Yeah. I, I thought he said that to the sister and not to him, so yeah, I thought he yeah, didn't he know does. about it. <laughs> when if it. He doesn't know, Ned, does he? Oh, they he is converse. stupid. He is really dumb. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now I'm dumb because I didn't realise how dumb he actually was. <laughs> He's just meant to be a happy-go-lucky man. He gets broken. This man's spirit is broken bit by bit, and it is quite hard to watch, actually. Because <laughs> everyone else is, is quite, yeah. like, bitter in this movie, and it's like, oh, now you are too. There's a lot of, like, commentary on, um, like, feuding and, um, like, um, our intrinsic nature to want to help one another and to be nice. That's a good through line th with this movie. Yeah, is the idea of just being nice, and um, there's like this civil war happening on the mainland that they're always they like walk past the beach and then the, like a bomb will go off mm -hmm. on the mainland and they'll stop and be like, oh, they don't even know why they're fighting. There's like a feud between the IRA and the Free State, and a lot of the time people don't understand why it's happening. And I think it was it, it, it was trying to contrast. The, the war that was going on on the mainland with their the the, the feudal nature of these two uh, yeah. men's relationship where they should have been happy together because they were friends but because it was like a civil war then that that, that crosses the boundary and it's like why are you fighting each other you should just be friends or like mm. bygones should be bygones and all that but I suppose it was trying to comment on like the the futility of it and we shouldn't be fighting against each other, especially not with like our brothers and sisters and our, yeah. our fellow countrymen, because it leads to nothing in the end. It leads to just like heartbreak and like more bloodshed and just upset. And I think that's what the movie was about. Ultimately, it's it is. I love that scene where um, probably my favorite scene in the movie, where like he's in the pub, and um, Porrick gets drunk, and he has a go at um. Ah, uh, what's his face? What's his name? Brendan Gleeson? Colm? Colm. Why is this always, always in like an Irish media? There's like some guy called Colm. <laughs> yeah, there was one in the Colm. guard, I think. <laughs> yeah, there was. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he has a go at him and he's like, um, ah, uh, fuck. Actually, yeah. He said, like, um, he used to be nice. And he says, niceness doesn't last. And you know what does last? And he says, don't say music. And he says, music. <laughs> music <laughs> lasts. And Porrick says, so does niceness. And he goes on this whole rant about how, like, his mother was nice. And, like, he... Uh, <laughs> Colm's idea, Brendan Gleeson, who's fucking fantastic. In it, yeah. Um, he, he goes on about, like, legacy. His character is all mm. about legacy. Trying to leave behind something after he's gone. But... There is a lot to do with w what that really matters. When and it's like, oh yeah, um, I just want some peace and quiet. And um, oh, he's too boring. It's like, um, what was it Pork Sisters? She's like, you're all feckin' boring. 
You're all, uh, all, all you men are all you men are, boring. <laughs> you live on an issue in like it's it's boring here and it's a boring place for boring people. You're not better than anybody yeah. else just because you think you are. Just because you make music, like you, he, he's all about legacy. Yeah, and he's like, oh, um, you know, Mozart. These things live on. And he like gets. The, the, the time the, period, the time stuff, period right. that Mozart was alive wrong. So, like, what does that legacy really mean ultimately if it is at the detriment of being alive, really, and like loving people and, and having friends and family that you can connect with and just having a network, you know? I'm kind of glad she went on him a little bit though, because I was just like, I'm, I was just waiting for her mm, to. Yeah. <sighs> like, it's because they're just both so, like, it's almost like really petty, isn't it? Like, mm. uh, well, to, to a degree, like, most of the film's quite petty, but I mean, like, especially in the beginning when it's really petty, and she's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? I'm just like, mm. exactly, like, what is going on? <laughs> and it's true, they, they are really boring, because, like, could you imagine actually living on that fucking island? I think I'd die. Yeah, you just go to the pub. Go to the pub and, like, see donkeys or whatever. Don't see donkeys That's just anymore, what they did. though, do when, you? When you, like, you say that now, because that, what you know is so much more than... Just going to the pub every night, but that's all they had. So that's all they, that's all they knew, right? Oh no, yeah, like for for them, I guess that's just yeah, that's just living or whatever. But and you know, it's like set in that sort of time period where it on is like a remote totally, island because that is all they have, and all they have is people and the community. It's it's good to like set it in like a rural type of community where like people is all that they have. I feel like this wouldn't work mm. if it was in any other setting. Like, or mm -hmm. not work as well. Because, yeah, because I feel like there'd be almost too many distractions and, you know, like, just other things that could keep you occupied. Mm. Like, it, like nowadays, if people were to cut off friendships, like, okay, fair enough, it would, like, hurt, but I feel like... I'll just like, watch a silly TikTok and be over it. Yeah, yeah. like, there's so many Do other... Else my time. Yeah, some other, some other distractions to get you through your day, but poor little Colin Farrell's walking around his island with his little cows and donkeys going oh there's no fucking people f here mm. for me to talk to anymore i guess i'll make friends with he doesn't have any other that friends. guy they both of them don't have any other friends no, they don't they only have each so, other you know colin he, he's decided i just won't have friends then ever again i'll dedicate myself to my music yeah um, but he technically like yeah, he's he not friends with the people he Yeah, he like, does all the music, music with like, students pub. and stuff, doesn't he? Is he? Well, he's not. I guess he's not really friends with them, but he's hanging out with them more than Paul. He's hanging Colin out with them Farrell's because they're doing music together. Yeah, but, but he's, he's still like he's still socialising with, with other people. Whereas, yeah, Paul Colin Farrell's talking to his fucking cow every mm. night. Like, <laughs> it's not really fair, is it? I suppose he would rather hang out with the the, the abusive policeman <laughs> for some reason. Oh yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah, that was weird. Like the like Colin Farrell's boring that this guy beats the shit out of his son every day. Well, I'll be friends with that like, guy. I like yeah, that guy. <laughs> Dominic, played by Barry Hogan, he like takes Colin Farrell around to his house, and his dad's just there, fucking stark naked, and his tiny little cock is now. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> hilarious. That was weird. Oh, so good. He's great. Also, uh, oh Barry, yeah, so good. Barry Hogan. He was he's up for an Oscar as well, and I think it's well deserved. Mm. Yeah, he was. He gave one of my favourite performances from last year. Mm -hmm. I think everyone in this was great. There is women here and good ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, he's great. I was gonna say I he never saw anything. a single woman except a sister. Yeah, was that like that? Was that the whole joke? Because like I didn't see any fucking women. There was that yes. old woman. This is McCormick. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, keep, they keep avoiding, <laughs> like hiding behind corners. Well, to be fair, if she came up to me and started going, "There'll be some deaths in the village," I'd be like, "God, Jesus Christ!" <laughs> she's a great character. She's I think insane. she is like part of the reason I think this movie is an absolute masterpiece. Because what's <laughs> it, it's saying on the surface level about like friendship and um, there's like war and um feuding but also there is like a lot to do with like ireland and like the the folk type of nature of yeah. the place and she kind of i think she kind of represents that uh that like old and ancient sort of uh vibe to the country mm. um she's she's always like in the background i think so sometimes there's just like a black dark figure in the background like when um, 
his sister, Porrick's sister leaves. And he like waves goodbye to her on the cliff. In the background, you see the, the dark shadow. Yeah. Sort of also there. She's got to be like, she's just lurking I that, around. I think that was her. She did seem to know things. Mm. Obviously, she, she, she portended the... Um, of course, that was um, Brendan Gleeson's song, The Banshees of Inish Sharon, that he was writing. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he called it that. And he said, um, oh, I fucking got, I think I, uh, sorry, I think I've got <laughs> the, uh, right here, yeah, uh, I don't think the Banshees scream to portend death anymore, I think they just sit back amused and observe, and she was often quite amused and just like kind of there to look at things and sort of observe, Yeah, she observed them a lot, and when she said, um, mm. like, there will be two deaths, she was right. Hmm. She knew a lot about what was going on there. I like the scene when um, uh, Porrick's sister, she was like standing, Siobhan, she was like standing on one end of the lake and the other end of the lake was Mrs. McCormick. She was like waving to her, so she waved back, but it was actually, she was like beckoning her to come to her over the <laughs> lake. And like, this is awesome. This is so cool. And it's so up my alley, like the, the kind of folklore, kind of ancient uh, slide to this movie. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. something about Max and like this... Uh... It's I like he was born ways. in a medieval way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do love that kind of stuff. It's, it's, yeah, it's very, like, weirdly, like, in with, like, nature and all that. I think it was sort of about, like, us as human beings being a bit more in, in with nature in, in the sense that, like, it's natural for us to want to bond with each other. It's natural for us to want to form communities and try to help each other. But when that's, like, divide, that gets divided... Just it fucks, it's fucked up, and just like it escalates for the these two characters, yeah. And in a way that it really didn't need to, but just the the, the petty squabble it led to more and more upset. So you know he's like, I'm gonna cut off my fingers now. He didn't need to do that, but he does it, and that in turn leads to uh, Porrick's donkey Jenny eating the fingers. She dies, and that makes Porrick mad. So he escalates the situation further and burns down his house. And all these things, they don't need to happen. It's, it is an escalation, it is, and that's how war happens as yeah. well. And it, does, it never needs to happen, but it's just, you know, people thinking that they can do these things like on their own, but that's not, that's not how we're bred as, as people and how we should get along, really. We're not, we're not individuals in that way, and a lot of, that's what, like the legacy part came into as well. It's like that's about being an individual. Be it like Mo- we remember Mozart as a person, but we don't remember who helped Mozart get to where he was. You know, he obviously had a network. He had a community. He wasn't just that's one right. guy doing like everything. I mean, he was obviously very talented. Talented, yeah. but you know, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> I think mean, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We need other people. Yeah, I really love the music in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music too. It's really cool. Who did it? It was um fucking so and so. I have to look it up. So and so. Score. Score. Carter Burwell. What a name for Fucking all. amazing stuff. A lot of like like bells used in it as well that kind of bring about this like really eerie but like quite um anticipatory yeah. vibe to it. And it does help like this. Tense escalation enough. of everything and the tension of like you know there's going to be some something fucked up is going to happen at the end and it kind of does it's, it is not a happy movie in any way but it's like well not in any way but it's like <laughs> it, well no yeah really you can't at, the, that. at the end it's like <laughs> it's still like quite you know the dust is settled but it is like eh, like things aren't really that great yeah but i do think the music reflects that very well it's used very very well and like quite subtly, it's not it's not a score that's like super in your face. Yeah, definitely not. It's 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 going for a vibe. It's cultivating a vibe. Again, one of the great vibes type movies. I love a good vibes type movie. Yeah, I think it also looks really really beautiful. There's like, yeah. incredible cinematography throughout. I feel like I, yeah, I just feel like it's weird to see a movie like this look this good, but it's like. Is it just like like a sign of the times or like a camera is getting better? Because I don't think you can make a movie that looked quite like this like 10 years ago in much yeah. the way that this does. It's, it's very much its own 
sort of thing. It just looks so clean the whole way through. Yeah, definitely. It's like like finchery in how like exact and clean it is. And like the the you think like basically everything about it is amazing. I really love the editing and I really love the like, the blocking and um, the cinematography and like how they light scenes. It's never like it all feels very natural. Yeah. Because they're not using really like electric bulbs in the <clears throat> in the shots at all. Um so in that way they were they were able to keep it very clean and very um yeah, a lot of natural lighting, I think. Although I'm not like I wouldn't be surprised if they use like bulbs and all that. Mm. I think you'd have to in especially in like the, the darker scenes and like the pubs and all that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> also like the bartender. <laughs> it was like he had his friend as well. Yeah. And you understood like they were like best friends. And that kind of like contrasted with um Parak and Cullum as well. It's like, yeah, and you could you could um You could have been like you them. Could think <laughs> that they were like that. Not, you know, yesterday. <laughs> but now they're not. And it is very strange. Uh, and and everybody thinks it's weird. Everybody thinks like Colum deciding not to be friends with Parak anymore is weird. Because it is. Mm. And like the like the scenes with the priest were like great. Um, oh, I love when the like Porik gets like the priest to talk to him. He's like, "Oh, you're not talking to Porik anymore." It's like that wouldn't be a sin, would it? He's like, "No, but it's not very nice, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just because he's was, not a very nice man. He no, he wasn't really. I think he went about it very strangely, and like he did a lot of things wrong. I think, yeah, I feel like he tried to be nice about it. Like in the beginning, and then he, I don't know, he's just a man pushed to the edge and he just went, fuck this then. Yeah. Guess I'm going to be a dick. <laughs> I thought I killed a miniature donkey. <laughs> he's like, do you think God gives a damn about miniature donkeys? <laughs> he's like, the great line in this was where he said, I fear he doesn't, and I fear that's where it's all gone wrong. <laughs> I agree that he should give a damn about the miniature donkeys. Mm hmm. That actually broke my soul. I, it's very I, upsetting. Like, the thing is, I was warned about it in the beginning. Actually, I was yeah. warned about it way before I watched the film. Chris was like, don't get attached to that donkey, Darcy, because you're no, not going to like it. it. You have to get attached to it, otherwise it doesn't feel yeah, as... And she did. Yeah. Unfortunately it's a great so. donkey. She's so cute. Oh, Jenny. How can you do that to Jenny? I know, I know it technically wasn't his fault, technically. He had to lose kind of. everything. Yeah. yeah. That's why. His sister had to go away, his best friend had to stop being his friend, and then like the last glimmer of hope <laughs> his had his sweet donkey. Jenny. I'm not putting my donkey outside when I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Mm. So good. <laughs> I love Jenny. Your death was not in vain, Jenny. Mm. You got a house burnt down because of you. <laughs> you are the real winner here, yeah. Jen. That was where it was like, Yeah, there's no coming back from this really. Isn't I don't it think. Fucking hell. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna as much burn as it was an accident, it was like this is how, this is how it escalates. There's no way that he's gonna like. I mean, do you come back from that? Like, how do you, like? What well, he you says do? at the end, like some things, there's no moving on from. Yeah, that's fair. And I think that's a good thing. But I think the, the first two times I watched this, I was like, yeah, it's fucked, and they're fucked, and everything's yeah. fucked. But this time, I didn't think that. I thought maybe it would be okay at the very end, where he said, like, thank you for looking after my dog um, when he burnt the house down. And he just <laughs> and says, he, like, anytime. He gets, he gets the dog. Yeah, he says, anytime. And then there was like, maybe they won't be, like, friends, friends, but they're not going to be hateful, yeah, like, yeah, actively like, hate hateful and horrible to each other. I kind of thought that as well, to be honest. I didn't get the vibes that it was, like... Over forever, well, not over forever. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got the vibes of, I get maybe one day they'll be like mm -hmm. civil to each other, you know? Like, it, it would just be like they'll be in the pub and they'll be like, yeah. Oh, you want a drink? But then they don't actually like hang out yeah. together properly. They just there kind was no of no malice, like, in yeah, what Colin yeah, that's did. What, yeah, that's what I mean. He, like, he, he just wanted to like be on his own, I suppose. Yeah. He didn't want Porrick there to like talk about what Finding he found shit. in his donkey shite yeah. for two hours. <laughs> that was great, but like when he when Porrick gets like beaten up by the policeman, he he does help him up. He does, and, and he, he does, takes like, him home. Yeah, he kind takes of. him home, sort of. sort of. It's a it's a good scene mm. where it establishes no, he doesn't hate him, but, but he, he doesn't, doesn't like him. <laughs> talk to him, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's no malice in there. No, no hatred. The dynamic Just between these vibes. two, it's fucking brilliant. It's it was great in In Bruges. 
it's better here, I think, and yeah. the way they bounce off each other. It's um, it's a very different sort of relationship dynamic going on in these two movies, but it it makes for a fucking um, an amazing performance from each of them. Mm. I think some of the best of the year. Yeah, definitely. You understand why they were up for Oscars? Like, yeah. it's obvious. Mm. <laughs> this is it's it's so good. It's so like meticulously planned out and. The screenplay is amazing. It's immaculate. You know, uh, I said in the um, review that we did, um, in the year in review, that there's like stuff going on in the script that's not really on the surface and it's not yeah, being talked definitely. about. But it's obviously, there's so much subtext and it's, it's executed fantastically. Love it so much. People banging upstairs. <laughs> I'm like they were drumming or something. People be drumming Very upstairs. Rhythmic. People will be drumming the Irish folklore songs. <laughs> they heard us. <laughs> it did remind me of the Irish folklore trilogy, to be fair. Yeah. In in the way that it kind of tackles like Ireland and all that all that deep rooted stuff and the um the folklore. You know, they care about like their country, and they want to tell a story about Ireland as well, because it's this country that's like it's been through a lot. All <laughs> Ireland, it's been through a fuck ton of stuff yeah. and just like a, a, a like civil war and people coming in and like taking advantage of them and just like they, they've seen some days um so i think it's like it's like a meditation on like ireland and like how they how mcdonna sort of feels about the place as well and that way i guess it's sort of like this is england in a, in a type of way yeah. but like almost on a on the on the same sort of scale but not really kind of at different ends i suppose because yeah, there is obviously a lot of love for the the country especially in like how he shoots it because it's so gorgeous, all these like lovely landscapes and all that. So green. Mm. Yeah. Very green. <laughs> Big stretch. Mm. Max is now cool. a cat. You got anything else to say about Banshees of Inisherin? No, I think we've covered everything. Lovely. What well, are we going to rate it out of? Jenny. Jenny's. Yeah, I thought it was a really great movie. I um, think... Um, Three billboards are still my favorite of his movies, but they're all like at least these three, like in Bruges, um, three billboards and this one, like are very, very close for me. I think they're all really great. He's such a um, fantastic writer and now director as well. Um, looking forward to seeing what he does next. I give it nine Jennies out of ten. Nice, yeah, <laughs> I love it so much, and I love, I just love movies that like you make you want to be a better person <laughs> it's 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 good for that and it's good for like you know when i saw this the second time i think um it was in the cinema and immediately after i like went to see you guys at the pub yeah i was like it was a great movie for that it just makes you want to go to the pub and see your friends um and be friendly to people and be kind um nice i like when barry keogan gets a stick with a hook and he's like a stick with a hook what would you use it for i wonder to hook things that are the length of a stick away <laughs> <laughs> what did it mean? <laughs> but it's true because it comes back at the end when he dies. Do you think he killed himself? Because they find him in the um, yeah. the lake. I kind of do, but only because I, I feel like wh wh why why else? Like I, think I don't he feel shot, like there's... he shot with Siobhan and when he said that he like he would want to like be in love with her. Yeah, and she said no, probably not because you were a bit too young. But it's like if that's all you have on an Sharon. Yeah, mm. that's yeah. It's your whole There's world's dead. There's not much there, else yeah. left for him. But that was a sad, that was quite that was sad. Really yeah, sad. Was and he was fair. abused a lot. So I thought like, that was be that was why he did. It. I I yeah. forgot all about the fact that he got turned out. He managed to be a bit optimistic, you know, when he was yeah. like up. He was genuinely upset when mm. Porrick just told him that like he'd done something awful, like he turned someone away from the island. Oh, and told yeah. them that their father was ill. So it was the worst right. thing he's ever heard. Yeah, it was the most meanest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like all this faith is gone, and there's a lot in that character that's like not said. Mm. Yeah, sad. Great stuff. If punching a policeman is a sin, we may as well pack up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, ten Jennies out of ten. I love it so much. It's probably it might be my favorite Martin Madonna movie. It's on a, it's on a level with three billboards. I think. I mean, three billboards is amazing. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I feel like every time we get round to this table, we get to this little bit of the, uh, the summary. Everyone said everything that I could ever say. 
and possibly more. But what I am going to say is it makes me want to go to Ireland now because mm. uh, yeah, not that I, I didn't want to go, yeah. go anyway, but I just love where like I see things that are green, like, you know, like trees and hills and m- mountain landscapes and shit. And I'm like, mm. I'm going to go there because I want to lay down in the field and draw something. And, and it's just always been a thing. And now I want to go and see a rainbow and lots of nice hills. Go so, to the pub. <laughs> Nine Jennies out of Jenny's pubs, ten. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. And your pub. Cool. That's Brendan Gleeson movies. Or two of them, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter More Brendan like two and a fifth. movies. Mm. I love that guy. He's great. He is good. <clears throat> More Brendan, please. Cool. So, that takes us to the end of that. Next episode, we are doing a free-for-all episode. It is the first Sunday of the month. So we're Ooh. all going to pick a movie. Doesn't matter what. Let's go. Starting with Chris, what did you pick? Yeah, so I'm picking a film that me and Darcy have watched, but I don't think you've seen um, Max. We've talked about um, the director a couple of times, but we've not talked about um, this one. Okay. Um, so I'm looking forward to re-watching it. Um, it's 20th Century Women, directed by Mike Mills. Oh, lovely. Yeah, the film's... Yeah. No, no, yeah. no spoilers. But, no, yeah. But fun. I've been, <laughs> oh, yeah, go. I've been meaning to watch that. Cool. I'll write that down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think we're doing this next marathon round mine as well. Yeah. Yes. That'll be good. Um, cool. Uh, my recommendation is, I believe it's Italian. It's from 1971. Uh, I got it on Criterion recently, so I wanted to watch it. Um, it was it was directed by Lu. Lucino Visconti, and it was called. It's called Death in Venice. I've heard of that movie. I, I think, nice. but I don't know anything about it because that's just classic me. It's like I've heard of a movie before. Yeah, but will I ever watch it? Not unless it's on the podcast. You will now. <laughs> yes, and in terms with that, not really in terms with that. It has nothing to do do with it whatsoever. I just threw a uh, a piece of paper into this cup. Um, I'm picking um, a film called After Yang. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. 2021. Apparently, it also came out in 2022, so I don't know what year yeah, it was. Yeah, it's 2022 over here. Right, right. One of those ones. Yeah. One of those. Yeah, it's one of those. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Three movies that I have not seen. That helped me out a lot. Nice. Uh, 20th Century Women, Death in Venice, and After Yang. Awesome. All that to come and more. On the Sunday Movie Marathon, episode 111. Uh, Awesome. I guess we're signing off. But not before I mention some social media that we have. Maybe you want to follow that. YouTube, the Sunday Movie Marathon. Instagram, at Sunday Movie Pod. Twitter, at Sunday Movie Pod. Facebook, at Sunday Movie Marathon. Letterboxd, at Sunday MM. Capital S, capital MM. Thank you very much. And um, also remember to like, subscribe, and rate the podcast five stars if you want to do that. And... um, yeah, yeah, if you want. Any last words? Oh, Thank you, Brendan. Brendan. Chris is a traitor because he didn't pick a Brendan Gleeson movie. Thank you, Brendan! We love Brendan, you, Brendan. Brendan! Brendan is the man. Love you.